Lost in the wilderness, we are at the mercy of nature, but when confronted by a predator, we may not always see the underlying danger. In June of 1983, four-year-old Nyleen disappeared while out with her family in the Elkhorn Mountains in Montana, and though many believe she is still alive, she has never been seen again. Today on Dark Matters, the disappearance of Nyleen K. Marshall. Nyleen K. Marshall, born on September 18th in 1978 to Kim and Nancy Marshall, was a well-loved young girl from Clancy, Montana. On June 25th, 1983, four-year-old Nyleen accompanied her parents to an amateur radio enthusiast gathering in the Elkhorn Mountains, a part of the Rocky Mountains in the southwestern corner of Montana. Naturally, the children, including Nyleen, took advantage of the sunny day, playing in the field and foraging for frogs in the nearby creek, a distance away from their parents. According to Unsolved Mysteries, two young girls passed Nyleen, sitting alone, when they noticed a man in a jogging suit, a man they didn't recognize. They heard Nyleen say, "'My brother can run faster than you,' at which the man came closer. Later, Nyleen told a six-year-old boy the man told her to, quote, follow the shadow. Then, at approximately 4 p.m., barefoot and wearing only a yellow t-shirt and shorts, Nyleen vanished. The search for Nyleen began immediately, as the odds were stacked against her. The area was dotted with mine shafts full of steep drop-offs and had dense forestry full of wildlife. To make matters worse, authorities and Nyleen's parents were worried that she'd been kidnapped. Hundreds of volunteers, police officers, and cadaver dogs combed through the forest looking for any trace of Nyleen. On Monday, June 27th, the search grid widened and missing persons posters were sent out all across the United States. Tuesday, the searchers went over previously searched areas again. Wednesday, a psychic was called to the scene. Thursday, searchers took to the air to cover more ground. On Saturday, the search dogs came out again, and by Monday, 10 days after she went missing, the search was called off. Even with a $10,000 reward, over 2,800 searchers, there wasn't a trace of Nyleen. She'd seemingly vanished into thin air. But as the years progressed, disturbing developments presented the possibility that she was still alive, but in the care of a monster. Unfortunately, the theories outnumber the facts for Nyleen's disappearance. These theories fall under two categories. She became lost, or was taken. Theory number one. Nyleen wandered away from the group, became lost, and succumbed to the wilderness. Despite Nyleen's case being classified as a non-family abduction, there are a select few who believe she possibly fell victim to her environment. However, after searching the area, there was no trace of her, even though she was barefoot when she disappeared and likely wouldn't have gotten far. So we have the second train of possibility. Nyleen was abducted. The question is, by who? Theory number two, Nyleen's stepfather kidnapped her. My research didn't find a lot of rhetoric on this point, but he was considered a person of interest in her case at some point, so this is just one theory. Theory number three, she was kidnapped, sold, and has little to no memory of her life as Nyleen. Again, no evidence really supports this speculation, but there was a curious article mentioned by a forum user named Crystal Dawn. Allegedly, in 1997, a Montana publication wrote an article about a young woman who gave birth in an out-of-state hospital. The woman knew very little about her past and said all she knew was that her mother's name was possibly Nyleen. Some speculate that the woman was actually Nyleen herself, but again, there is no concrete evidence to support this. Theory number four. Nyleen was abducted by an unnamed man and woman. Nyleen's uncle believed he saw this man and woman the day after Nyleen's disappearance. I wasn't able to find a mention of exact names of these people, but they were wanted for child abduction elsewhere in the country. It is unknown if they are connected to the case, and only one source mentioned it. 
Theory number five. Nylene was kidnapped, murdered, and has been found, but not connected to the case. Some believe that Nylene K. Marshall is the Racine County Jane Doe for several reasons. The images you are about to see are graphic, so just a forewarning. They believe Nylene and the Jane Doe share similar features. The unidentified woman was found in Wisconsin, where there were several leads in Nylene's case, including a possible sighting near Janesville. Jane Doe was found in 1999 and was believed to be 18 to 35 years old. If Nyleen was alive for most of her absence, she would have been approximately 19 years old. Jane Doe suffered from malnourishment and showed signs of sexual abuse before death. The main discrepancy in their appearance, though, is the eyes. Jane Doe had green, brown, or hazel eyes, while Nyleen had the opposite blue eyes. Baby's eyes can change from blue to other colors within their first three years, but Nyleen was past that age range. And finally, we have theory number six. Nyleen was kidnapped, kept alive, abused, and her abductor tormented parents and authorities with letters and calls years after her disappearance. November 27th, 1985. The phone rings at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and an anonymous caller says something that chills the entire room. They claim they were the one who abducted Nyleen Kay. The FBI steps in and traces the anonymous phone calls to various public phones in Edgerton, Wisconsin, but after the phone booths are identified, the calls stop. Then, in January of 1986, Child Find of America, a missing children's organization based out of New York, receives typewritten letters from Nyleen's supposed abductor, and they're postmarked out of Madison, Wisconsin, almost 30 miles northwest of where the calls were placed. The letter writer calls Nyleen by her middle name, Kay, and says that after picking her up on a road in Elkhorn Park between Helena and Boulder, he decided to take her home with him. He claims to work from home off of investment income where Kay is homeschooled. Kay also allegedly goes on trips with him, everywhere from San Francisco to New York, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Nashville, Chicago, Puerto Rico, and Canada. The abductor describes Kay's appearance and says she is happy and he just can't, quote, let her go. The letter contained disturbing statements that implied Nyleen was being sexually abused and details about the case that hadn't been made public. Still, there is contention about the legitimacy of the letter. Some believe it was a prankster or someone mentally disturbed, as opposed to an actual abductor. Both the phone calls and the letters couldn't be traced to an individual, and unless they are or new evidence comes to light, it's unlikely we'll ever know who made the calls and it's unlikely we'll know what happened to Nyleen K. Marshall. Nyleen's case has been connected to other tragedies and even helped solve one, but the Marshall family only saw more unhappiness. Nyleen's mother, Nancy, said that friends may have seen her smile, but everywhere she went, she kept her eyes peeled, hoping to see her daughter again. Tragically, Nancy never saw Nyleen again after she was reportedly sexually assaulted and murdered in Mexico in 1995. An alleged cousin claimed the Mexican authorities labeled Nancy's death a suicide, despite the fact she was found with her hands behind her back, hanging from a man's belt with all of her valuables missing. Again, this is unconfirmed, but the date of her death on July 24, 1995 coordinates. In 1990, Unsolved Mysteries aired an episode on Nyleen's disappearance, and it led to the resolution of a separate missing persons case. A caller believed that she went to school with someone who resembled Nyleen, but the young girl she was referring to was actually Monica Bonilla, another missing girl. Monica had been taken by her non-custodial father, and after the episode aired, eight years after going missing, Monica returned to her mother. However, Nyleen has never been found, justice for her and her family has never surfaced, and no perpetrator has been prosecuted for this crime. If you have seen or have any information on Nyleen K. Marshall, you are encouraged to contact the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office at 406-225-4075. Again, that's 406-225-4075. All additional case information is listed in the description below. Special thanks to the Patreon family. 
The names you see on screen are just some of the people who financially contribute to this channel. Whether they are passionate about cases like Nyleen's or the other dark content on this channel, their support cannot be overstated. If you are interested in supporting the channel, information is in the description, but even if you only continue to support by watching, thank you. Thank you for giving Nyleen's case a moment of your time. No matter what you choose to believe or what you speculate, I ask you only for respect in the comments below. And remember, though these may be dark matters, the darkness always matters. Thank you for watching the video. Exposure to these cases is highly important. And to those of you who support this channel by watching, contributing, or buying merchandise, thank you. If you want to see other unsolved cases or dark content, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Stay safe, friends, and have a good night.